funding for their businesses and mentorship. Please be your own boss. This is KTN News. tena mtazamaji na asante sana kwa kuendelea kuwa nasi tunakupeleka moja kwa moja hadi katika maeneo ya pwani ambapo mahakama ya rufaa imeshikilia msimamo wa mahakama kuu kuhusiana na kesi ya kwekwe mwandaza aliyeuawa na maafisa wa polisi mwaka 2014 kwenye uamuzi wa mahakama hapo awali maafisa wawili wa polisi walipatikana na hatia ya kumpiga risasi hadi kufa marehemu kwekwe mwandaza na kufungwa kifungo cha miaka saba gerezani baada ya wao kukata rufaa Francis Mtanaki ana maelezo kamili Veronica Gitahi pamoja na afisa mmoja wa polisi walikata rufaa baada ya mahakama kuu kuwapata na makosa ya kumpiga risasi kinyume cha sheria kwa kwa mwandaza Agosti 22 mwaka 2014 huko Kinango kaunti ya Kwale alipokuwa nyumbani lakini mahakama ya rufaa kupitia jaji ya Siki Mahandia baada ya wao kusikiza kesi hiyo kwa zaidi ya mwaka mmoja bado walisalia na uamuzi huo huo We do not see any basis for interfering with the sentence in the result ya Pellant's appeal fails and is hereby dismissed. As regards the cross appeal, the state had no right of appeal in the circumstances of this case. According the same is hereby struck out and so ordered. Kwenye uamuzi wao yapo mambo mawili ambayo yalizua mkanganyiko. Moja likiwa ni madai ya kuwa sauti ya upanga ilisikika ndipo sawa kamimia risasi mtoto kwa kumandaza hadi kufa. Marehemu kwa kumandaza alikuwa na umri wa miaka 14 wakati huo. He sound was allegedly against the wall of a house yet when the learned judge visited the house in Po he found that the house to be a makuti tight mad house. Sababu nyingine ni kuwa maafisa hao walikuwa makundi mawili na 13 kwa idadi hivyo basi mbona hao wangeweza kumpokonya mtoto marehemu kwekwe Mandaza panga aliyokuwa nayo kama walivodai iwapo walikuwa na ukweli na nia nzuri. The use of firearms in such a situation is not consistent with the imperatives of the constitution and the National Police Service Act and in particular the express requirement that police officers must make every effort to avoid using firearms on children. Even assuming for once that the deceased a girl of 14 years was indeed armed with a banga, she was up against a big group of police officers who are all armed with firearms. The evidence on record shows that the 13 police officers who went to apprehend the suspects were divided in two groups. That would mean that the group led by the first appellant had no less than eight police officers armed with AK rifles. It is difficult to believe that such a big number of police officers could not disarm the child or whoever else they assumed was there without shooting them in the head and chest. Kwa sasa maafisa hawa wawili watalazimika kukamilisha kifungo cha miaka saba gerezani kabla ya hatma yao kuhusu idara ya polisi kufahamika kamili. Francis Mtalaki, KT News, Mombasa. Tazamaji kufikia hapo sina la ziada na tamatisha taarifa za mbiu ya KTN lakini tunakuletea makala maalum ya Kinyang'anyiro 2017 ambapo tunaangazia taarifa kutoka kaunti mbalimbali kuhusiana na jinsi ambavyo maeneo yanavyojipanga kabla ya uchaguzi mkuu mnamo Agosti tarehe nane. naitwa Mashirima Kapombe mtangazaji wetu wa lugha ishara ni Miresha Uiti tukutane wakati mwingine panapo majaliwa jioni njema Ujambo mtazamaji popote ulipo karibu kwenye makala haya mapya ya Kinyang'anyiro ambayo yatakuwa yanakujia kila siku ya Alhamisi kuanzia saa moja na nusu hadi saa mbili. Kupitia na habari wenzangu tutakuwa tunaangazia hali ya siasa katika kaunti mbalimbali mbali, hapa nchini Kenya na tutakuwa ni wenye kuelezea kinachoendelea kuhusiana na swala la siasa katika maeneo hayo. Jina langu ni Ali Manzu. Basi kutufungulia makala yetu siku hii ya leo mtazamaji tunaelekea hadi katika kaunti ya Kisumu ambako lile tangazo la kiongozi wa chama cha ODM Raila Odinga kwamba hatompendelea mgombezi yoyote katika kura ya mchujo ambayo inayotarajiwa katika chama cha ODM imepokolewa na mama imepokolewa vema kabisa na wenyeji katika maeneo hayo 
ni hatua ambayo wenyeji wanasema kwamba itapelekea wao kupata fursa ya kumchagua kiongozi ambao wanayomtaka mwenyewe bila kusukumiwa kiongozi yeyote. Mwana habari mwenzangu Rashid Ronald anatusimulia mengi zaidi kutoka kaunti ya Kisumu. Wanasiasa katika eneo hili waliamini kuwa kumdhihirishia Raila Odinga kwamba umewasajili wapiga kura wengi basi una nafasi nzuri ya kupata tiketi ya chama hicho. Seneta wa Kisumu Wanyangnyongo na naibu gavana wa Kisumu Ruth Odinga sasa wanamshutumu gavana Jack Kranguma kwa madai ya kutatisha shughuli ya usajili kwa kujitenga na viongozi wengine. The so called friends of Ranguma have decided that what we have been doing which has been very successful must now fail. Na hilo halikumridhisha gavana Jack Ranguma rather than wasting time fighting small egocentric battles related to local politics we must unite and focus our attention on mopping up every potential voter to register before the 14th of February 2017 kumeibuka makundi mbalimbali katika kinyanganyiro cha ugavana mmoja ya kundi hilo Najumuisha seneta Nyang Nyongo na naibu gavana Ruth Odinga ambao kwa sasa wanapania kumshawishi mgombeaji mwingine wa ugavana Hesron Makobewa kuendelea na azma yake huku akinuia kugawanya kura ya gavana Jack Kranguma kwa ni yeye gavana na Makobewa wanatoka sehemu moja yani eneo la Kano I am confident that we will have free fair and transparent elections Kranguma kupande wake anajisatiti vilivyo kutetea wadhifa huo lakini itambidi kutafuta mgombea mwenza baada ya naibu wake kumkimbia na kusema yeye pia anataka kuwania wadhifa huo I have done a lot of things that I think require uh, that I continue to complete them Raila Odinga amesema mara hii hatampendelea mgombea yoyote yule tamko ambalo limezua kiwewe kwa baadhi ya wanasiasa ambao katika siku za hapo awali wamemtegemea sana kushinda Sio siri kuwa hapo awali ushawishi wake umekuwa na umuhimu mkubwa sana katika eneo ambalo tamko lake ni kama sheria. Kwa upande wake Ruth Odinga uwanja unaonekana kuwa na magugu kisa na maana yeye ni dadake kiongozi wa Kodra ila Odinga. How did I affect Raila's candidature when I'm already a deputy governor? Uh, I am already a deputy governor here. Kinyanganyiro cha useneta hakina upinzani mkali kama ugavana. Hayo sio maneno yangu bali ni yake mbunge wa Nyando Fred Outa ambaye anawania useneta. Anawania kiti hicho kwa pamoja na engineer Paul Ogoda na Dr. Rose Kisia ambaye ni waziri katika serikali ya kaunti ya Kisumu. Aso Outa when I look at uh, I don't even know if I have any challenger. I don't want to talk about Outa because I doubt whether he has done anything for the Kisumu county. I would rather talk about myself. Katika uchaguzi wa mbunge mwakilishi wanawake Kivumbi ni kati ya Rose Nyamunga na mkereketu wa ODM Rosa Buyu. The first thing I'm going to do is to bring this office closer to the people. There is no way you can have a seat and have a central office in Kisumu Central, one constituency. We are the champions of uh, the democracy and there is enough space for each and every one of us. We are just to tell the people what is it that we we we, we can offer. Hata hivyo mambo ni mshike mshike katika viti vya ubunge hapa Kisumu hasa kile cha Kisumu Central baada ya kuingia ulingoni kwa aliyekuwa katibu wa TNA Onyango Olo ambaye amehamia ODM. Atakabiliana na Ken Obura na Richard Ogendo. I am prepared to offer effective representation on the people of the people of Kisumu Central. Most of the people know me personally and we've shaken hands. And so I believe that these people are not lying to me when they look me in the eye and say look we're going to vote you. I believe I'll win this. Year. Mbunge wa Kisumu West Olago Aluoch huenda mara hii asiwe na ushindani mkali hasa baada ya mpinzani wake mkuu Rosa Buyu kubadilisha nia. But in the next few weeks I'm, I'm going to make up my mind I'm consulting very widely. I'm going to make up my mind whether to shift to ODM or to stay in Port Kenya. Bila shaka kitakuwa kinyanganyiro kikubwa itakapofikia wakati wa ile kura ya uteuzi hapa Kisumu. Huku kila anayewania akiwa ama akifahamu kwamba kupata tiketi ya ODM ni kama kushinda kwenye uchaguzi. Rashid Ronald KTN News katika kaunti ya Kisumu. Na mtazamaji kutoka kaunti ya Kisumu sasa tuelekee katika kaunti ya Bometa ambako ikiwa imesalia miezi miwili kabla ya kura ile ya mchujo kwa wagombezi kutoka jubili kufanyika basi tayari wagombezi hao wanaendelea kujinoa misuli. 
ni kinyanganyiro kitakuwa ni kati ya speaker wa bunge la taifa manaibu wa speaker wa bunge la taifa Joyce Laboso na mwenyekiti wa kitaifa wa maji daktari Julius Kones mtazamaji moja kati yao basi atapata tiketi ya chama cha jubili na vile vile kuungwa mkono na naibu wa rais William Ruto kwenye siasa za sehemu ile ya kusini mwa bonde la ufa hivi sasa basi nampisha mwana habari Jeff Kirui atuarifu na mengi zaidi kutoka katika kaunti ya Bomet Takriban miezi sita kabla ya uchaguzi mkuu ujao siasa katika eneo la South Rift zimechacha kampeni za kurai kura za jamii ya Kipsigiz zikinoga kaunti ya Bomet japo ndipo kurunzi inaelekezwa ambako chimbuko la uasi linatokota kufuatia uhasama wa kisiasa uliopo kati ya wadau wa jubilii hususan naibu rais William Ruto na somo wake governor Isaac Ruto Musipo nyamaza hii mkutano itakwisha kuna manana hiyo Uja kutisha tisha hapa na manana kidogo ati mkutano itaisha mkutano ya nani itaisha Uhasama kati ya naibu rais Ruto na Gavana Ruto ulichochewa na hatua ya kuvunjwa kwa chama cha URP kujiunga na Jubilee Gavana Ruto akiwa mstari wa mbele kwenye pingamizi hizo na kubuni chama chake chama cha mashinani anachonuia kukitumia kama chombo kuwania u gavana tena Bali na kuwasilisha wagombeaji wa nyathwa nyingine za ubunge, useneta na wawakilishi wa wodi. Tunamwambia jubilee kwa heri. Mwambia he kwa heri ya kutuonana. Kwa heri ya kutuonana. Lakini kila upande unavutia kwake. William Ruto kwa upande wake yuko radhi kupasha misuli moto kuhakikisha eneo limesalia kwa himaya ya jubilee. Tayari jubilee ina vigogo wawili wa kisiasa katika eneo hilo wakigombea nafasi ya kupigwa jeki kumngatua gavana Ruto mamlakani. Mbunge wa Sotik Dr. Joyce Laboso ambaye pia ni naibu speaker wa bunge la taifa na mwenyekiti wa bodi ya maji Dr. Julius Kones ambaye alihudumu kwa muhula mmoja akiwa mbunge wa Konoin mwaka 2007. na saba. This is an agricultural area. So most of the things that we'll be talking about are around agriculture. It's around the tea industry. 18 or is it 19 out of the of the of, of, of the 25 wards there yeah, are tea growing areas what can we do around the tea I mean, around the dairy to to take care of the lower parts that are not uh, tea growing we must uh, reduce the political rhetorics in this county this county is known for for a lot of uh, talk sometimes violence here and there i think my candidature is to bring peace and stability in this county. Kwenye uchaguzi mkuu uliopita, Dr. Kones aliwania ugavana na kuibuka wa pili baada ya kubwagwa kwa kura takriban 1060 dhidi ya kura takriban 1200 zilizopigwa. I'm not looking to be a cultural leader. No. I want to be the governor. Probably she has an advantage being a female candidate. But, uh, but I want to believe also what happened in America is also going to work in my favor. County ya Bomet kwa mujibu wa takwimu za IEBC kwenye uchaguzi mkuu wa mwaka 2013 inawapiga kura 1252358. Eneo bunge la Sotik la Laboso likiongozwa kwa kura 1057. Konoin kwa Julius Kones likiwa na kura 1055, Chepalungu nyumbani kwa Isaac Ruto likifuata unyo unyo kwa kura 1051. Bomet ya kati kishikilia nambari 4 na kura 1046. Bomet Mashariki na kura 1041. Novemba mwaka uliopita, kaunti ya Bomet ligonga vichwa vya habari kufuatia makabiliano kati ya wafuasi wa Governor Ruto na wale wa Joyce Laboso. Mtafaruku uliosababisha Gavana Ruto kujeruhiwa kufuatia mshike mshike ulioibuka katika uwanja wa Silibwit. The police in Bobet are acting uh, under instructions uh, to harass uh, anyone who appears not to be in agreement uh, with the system. One of the things I would love to to be a governor in in Bomet is first of all to stop the shenanigans to stop the chaos and to focus on development i'm the only one who can work with any leader irrespective of political affiliation so uh, and i think this is what permit uh, people really need at this point kila upande kando na sera walizonazo utategemea rekodi ya utenda kazi gavana ruto atajitetea kwa kuiweka wazi alivyoendeleza miradi ya maendeleo kupitia mgao wa fedha kwa county 
la boso wakijitetea kupitia mfuko wa CDF miula miwili amehudumu bungeni Kones akisalia na rekodi yake akiwa mbunge wa Kanoin na hivi sasa akiwa mwenyekiti wa bodi ya kitaifa ya maji kwa hivyo vyote vile matokeo ya uchaguzi mkuu ujao yatadhihirisha babe wa siasa katika eneo la South Rift Jeff Kirui KTN News na mtazamaji kutoka kaunti ya Bomet basi wacha nikuelezee siasa inayoendelea hivi sasa katika maeneo ya kusini mwa Kenya hapa nikizungumzia ukanda wa pwani ya Kenya maeneo mbalimbali mbali nchini mtazamaji yameonekana kujipanga katika umoja wao ambao unaotarajiwa kudhihirika ifikapo Agosti tarehe nane yani wakati wa Kenya watakuwa naenda kwenye uchaguzi mkuu lakini katika eneo la pwani pale mtazamaji Limeonekana kukosa sauti moja wakati huu kama ilivyoshuhudiwa katika ile miaka ya sabini hadi tisini wakati ambapo walikuwa wanaongea kwa pamoja na kupiga kura kwa pamoja. Mashirima Kapombe ana uchambuzi wa kina kuhusu siasa kutoka sehemu hii ya pwani na sababu ambazo zinazochangia pakubwa kutokuwepo kwa msemaji ambaye atakuwa na unganisha jamii ya wapwani. Vigogo wa siasa waliovuma kama mawimbi ya bahari pwani yote mienendo yao ikishangiliwa na wenyeji wa pwani katika tawala za marais Jomo Kenyatta, Daniel Toretti Charap Moi na Mwai Kibaki kwa kiasi fulani licha ya kabila, rangi au eneo. First of all by giving them a sense of identity and a sense of hope that indeed these leaders were not fake <laughs> so to say that when whatever they stand for is what they are going to stand for even when they go to parliament. Wherever they'll go, they'll articulate the needs of the people of the coast. Majina yao marehemu Sharif Nasir, Ronald Katanangala na Karisa Maida yakiambatana na sauti ya pwani waliodhaniwa kuwakilisha kila waliposimama kuzungumza. Hao wakati mwingi ni watu walikuwa wanatumiwa na serikali kuuchu watu wao. Hata hivyo maisha yao yalipokatika kwa mazingira tofauti pengo lililobaki lilidhaniwa kuwa litazibwa na uasisi wa ugatuzi katika katiba mpya ya mwaka 2010. Kwa sasa mimi nikiwa niko katika county ya Kilifi kwa mfano. Ninajitambua kwamba kazi zote ambazo ni za county hii lazima zichukuliwe na watu wa county yangu. Lakini sio wote wanaunga mkono kauli hiyo. Mbunge wa Mvita Abdul Somad Sharif Nasir mwanawe marehemu Sharif Nasir anahisi kuwa mambo mengine yamechangia ile hali ya kutokuwepo na msemaji wa wapwani wakati huu. Kulingana naye utofauti wa wapwani yani kabila na tamaduni imefanya kuwe na ugumu wa kuwa na sauti moja. Lakini kuna wale waliojitokeza kutaka nafasi hiyo kama vile gavana wa Mombasa Ali Hassan Joho ambaye aliingia siasani rasmi mwaka 2004 baada ya kifo cha Karisa Maitha aliyejulikana na wapwani siku hizo kama mgogo na mbunge wa Kilifi Kaskazini Gideon Mungaro. Ukienda magharibi utawasikia wanasema ni nani? Lakini sisi wapwani tukisema ni fulani inkuwa nkituko. Jubilii kumchagua Mungaro kama msemaji wao ama msemaji wa wapwani wametukua msemaji gushi baadhi ya viongozi wakishabikia kauli kuwa ni wakati eneo la pwani lifuate mfano wa maeneo mengine ukienda lunga lunga ukienda kiunga ukienda taita taveta mtu ambaye anatajika na nyota yake iko juu ni ndugu yetu governor Hassan Ali Joho lakini semi zake zenyewe na vile ambavyo anajitambulisha ni kwamba upeo wake wa ule ule ukinarawaki unaishia una, mahali pafupi sana kwanza amejitambulisha kama sultan wa Mombasa tuna inatukumbusha kabisa wakati ule tulikuwa na sultani wa Zanzibar ambapo eneo lake lilikuwa limegemea tu hapa na pale kisha unajua katika maadili yale ya kujitambulisha vile mtu unajiegemeza na pia mrengo wa kidini sasa pia unajitambulisha kama ile labda nguvu yako itatokana na dini fulani Mbali na hilo swala la chama na muda uongozini ni vizingiti vingine ambavyo vimeonekana kukosa kukata kiu ya wapwani kuwa na msemaji halisi. Kwa sasa sehemu kubwa ya pwani inacheza ngoma ya upinzani huku serikali ya jubilii ikijaribu kujenga mnara. Joho ni mkakamavu na haogopi na hatishu. Hata kusema ukweli mimi siwezi kumlinganisha na kina Sharif Nasser. Siwezi kumlinganisha na kina Karisa Maida. Joho ni zaidi ya kina Karisa Maida. Mheshimiwa Mheshimiwa Joho na Mheshimiwa Kingi hao ndio wagogo wetu wa kipwani. 
Sasa swali ni je, wapwani watakuwa na hafla rasmi ya kumtawaza msemaji wao ama kauli kama hizi? Mimi najua nikirudisha hichi nikirudisha hichi kibaza sauti nitawashwa kweli kweli hapa na watu wengine. Na mimi nikisema hivyo sina uadui na mtu. Siasa ni kujitete. Zimedhihirisha kuwa msemaji yupo na asiyejua hataambi watazama. Mashirima Kapombe KT News. Kinyanganyiro cha nafasi ya ugavana katika kaunti ya Uasi Ngishu kimeonekana kuwavutia mibabe katika nafasi hiyo jambo ambalo linamkosesha usingizi gavana aliye sasa Jackson Mandago kutokamana na kile ambacho kinachoendelea madai ya naibu wa rais William Ruto kuingilia kati na kuweza pia kufanya uhusiano wa karibu na baadhi ya wapinzani wake ni baadhi ya mambo tu ambayo yanamkosesha usingizi mtazamaji mwanahabari mwenzangu Elvis Kosgei basi anatukunjia jamvi kwenye kinyanganyiro cha siku hii ya leo Kinara wa kaunti ya Wasingishu kwa sasa Jackson Kiplagat Mandago ambaye utumia rungu kuwa nembo yake. Pengine rungu hii itakupa kumbukizi ya aliyekuwa rais mstaafu Daniel Toroiti Charap Moi na kwa kile kilichoonekana kuwa sadfa katika mazishi ya maremu Makto. Seneta wa Baringo Gideon Moi alimwambia Mandago mbele ya rais na naibu wake kuwa chuma chake kimotoni kutokana na ujio wa Bundotich zedeka ya Kiprop ku manda go inget acho min wo mie lakin nalen ke na ko le ka ke ngi tu ni chito ni glen bu se ke mato mai nai manda go wewe ni rafiki yangu na unajua Atare. na nadhani unajua kuna mtu amemsimamisha kugombea ugavana hapa wasingishwe anaitwa buze unajua hama ujui on a light note mshimo ko ske manda go akando ichu ro chu tugol to me you ro you nikimalizia Nataka kuambia Henry Kozge, Mandago na viongozi wengine najua nyinyi ni wazuri kwamba mkishindwa kupata tiketi ya jubilee. Misimamo yake mikali imempa maadui pamoja na marafiki kwa kiasi kikubwa. Mseto huo wa sifa nadhaniwa kuwa unaweza kumfikisha katika utepe wa Agosti 7 akiwa salama ama uvuruge safari yake. Mandago sasa yuko katika sakasaka ya mula wa pili. I, I believe the people of Wazengishi will re-elect me on the basis of what we've been able to do for the four years. And on the basis that what I pledge we've been able to deliver a minimum of 80%. Kwa Mandago itamjuzu kusawazisha kura za jamii ya Kalenjin na vile vile kuzishawishi jamii nyinginezo zinazoishi wasingishu kutumia nyenzo mbalimbali I'm one politician who does not depend on investments I'm a man of my own and I stand on my own two feet and I can face the electorate of this county with confidence and tell them what I've been able to do for them Lakini ujio wa huyu bwana umezua makubwa kuliko ilivyotarajiwa Bundo Teach ZDK ya Kipro au Kipenda Buzeki ni jina ambalo linasemwa kwa matao ya juu kutokana na umiliki wake wa kampuni moja ya maziwa. Buzeki anadaiwa kutumia mapenzi ya Kalenjin kwa maziwa kuzinasa kura zao. Hata hivyo, amekanusha madai ya kutumiwa na naibu rais William Ruto ili kufaidi kisiasa. I, I, I think uh, it's laughable that uh, somebody would say that Kiprop somebody who has such a drive somebody who has such a liberal and independent thinking would be coerced to accept to take the responsibility of being the governor of an entire county on behalf of another person Kando na jamii ya Kalenjin Buzeki anapania kutumia upole wake kuna sakura za jamii nyingine I'm not competing with any other person in the county of Wazingisha I have no competitor My competitor are the challenges and the problems of people who have was engaged. That is my competition. My competition is not a human being. Why do I have to compete with another human being? How will that help the people who was engaged? I'm the one who is in the forefront. Nobody can can say today that Mandago has not done for the farmers. Licha ya hayo kuna tuhuma kwamba aliuza kampuni yake kwa jamii nyingine ambayo ni mwiko katika jamii ya Kalenjin kukiuza kibuyu cha maziwa. Kwa Buzeki hii ni siasa chafu tu 
kutoka kwa wapinzani wake the, 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 the correct word is they've made it look like it was a crime for me to sell molo milk selling it was a business decision but just to mention that before I sold it, I, I gave uh, the counties that were within my catchment areas an opportunity to buy molo milk. Our governor for Wazingishu was there, the governor for Elgeo Marakete was there, the governor for uh, other many counties were there. Uh, you know, let me tell you, Bosge, what drives politics 90% is propaganda. 90%. 10% is compensated by money. And that's what my opponents are doing. Kando na Buzeki, Felix Butit, Edward Serem na Julius Bitok ni miongoni mwa wale waliojitokeza kumshusha ngazi gavana wa kaunti ya Wasingishu Jackson Kiplagat Mandago. I said before my competition is not necessarily Mandago. My competition is the policies that we bring in and if my policies are better than Mandago or any other any other aspirants, I believe it is the people to make that decision. As to who among all this is a better leader. Mm -hmm. Of course we, we are not only, we, me, I'm, uh, I'm selling myself as, um, as a senior manager. One factor that will determine that race is the tribal arithmetic. Huku wakazi wa county ya wasingishu wakisubiri uchaguzi wa gosti nne mapema mwakani. Itabainika mbivu na mbichi wakati wa gombeaji watajitosa katika kinyanga nyiro cha uteuzi mnamo aprili. Elvis Kosgei. Kate and Leo katika county ya Wasingishu. Asante sana Elvis Kosgei na vile vile shukran kwa na habari wenzangu ambao wamechukua fursa na kuandaa makala ambayo wamekuletea kutoka maeneo mbali mbali ya nchi makala ambayo yanaangazia hali ya joto la siasa jinsi ambavyo linavyoendelea kupanda wakati huu ambapo Kenya inajiandaa kwa uchaguzi mkuu baadaye tarehe 8 mwezi wa Agosti mwaka huu wa 2017. Kabla sija kuacha mtazamaji naomba ni kuarifu kwamba station yako ya KTN News ndio itakuwa stesheni ya uchaguzi. Kwa nini nasema hivi itakuwa ni yenye kuletea makala kama haya na vile vile taarifa kwa njia moja kwa moja kuhusiana na mchakato mzima wa kampeni wakati zitakapoanza na vile vile kuletea uchaguzi wenyewe namna utakavyofanyika hapa nchini Kenya. Mimi ni Ali Manzu kwa niaba ya wenzangu ambao wameandaa makala haya basi tukutane tena wiki ijayo siku ya Alhamisi kama leo kuanzia saa moja na nusu hadi saa mbili tutakapokuletea kipindi hiki cha Kinyang'anyiro